Hello. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting the lab, Alice, to the Blender conference. It's the first time we show up here. Uh, first thing first, Alice is a research lab in Brussels, a computer lab. So we work with the computer and since 10 years with Blender. And it's perfect to make research. You make models, you can test things, you can combine knowledge you have into one place and then extract again what you want from this. Uh, first, uh, first thought of a computer lab in architecture is to analyze the existing built environment. That's one level of research in the lab. Second, and here you see a project, which, or a research project, which is a reconstitution of a demolished building which was existing in Brussels. My colleague, Denis de Reik, will talk about this research project uh, Friday morning at 10 in this room. And um, when, when one extracts information from a model combined, the tool we use in the lab is representation. So we, our methodology is always to look at how you make drawings, images, in order to produce knowledge. So it's really the, the main focus is architects have tools which are representational, and with these tools, one can produce knowledge. So we do research with that. And then, of course, we do research on the tool itself. Like we want to also investigate new ways of drawings or making drawings. So this is a, a machine I built for my PhD. Uh, it's basically a laser cutter without a laser, uh, with a new head designed on Blender, 3D printed, and it gives the a notion of making drawings by controlling the process. So one has to translate vectors into movements, and these movements become a drawing. So it's a way to yes, refine craftsmanship in drawing and the computer. Another project, a bit older, uh, also worked on, which is called Perspectiva Virtualis. Uh, it was at the Lisbon Triennale in 2019. Uh, the idea, it's very simple. It's super low-tech, a projector and a webcam, and that basically produces an image over which is um, added a section of an existing or non-existing building. And the section is at the scale of the person who can walk through, through the section. There you see. Uh, there, Blender was used um, to basically just model the space in which the installation will be, and then with the Z buffer, having data about the depth. So there's no uh, image recognition algorithm, AI, anything. It's just a, a basic OpenCV managing of pixels. So Blender in the lab has an interesting story, is that uh, the architectural field is full with uh, software under the umbrella of CAT, so computer-aided design. And we don't want these tools because they already have a, a notion of what architecture should be in their source code. So they are often on the market, so they try to uh, convince architects to use it, and that's directed towards the construction industry, let's say. We, we only want to make images, so Blender is perfect. Second uh, advantage is the Python uh, int API which we use as a, a tool in our class. So students write code, they learn it in six months, so it's not the best, uh, the best algorithms, but by writing code, they have to think about the process of making a model more than the, the final shape of the model. So they have to deconstruct their uh, reasoning and define the process, not define the end object. And they can, of course, by 3D printing, the model, explore the forms, and then go back to the code, and then print again, explore again. So that's what Blender does in the lab. And um, one thing which was missing was a certain type of uh, way of projecting the model uh, with a camera. So that's the missing camera. The, um, the missing technique, let's say, underlying the camera is oblique projection. So basically, this talk will be uh, showing that we uh, I will try to explain what oblique projection is and then show how we, let's say, uh, hacked it into Blender with very, very simple means. And the goal is a bit to lobby for this camera. So if there's developers, please come talk to me because we want this camera in Blender. We want to make Blender oblique. 
To do that, we will look at what projections exist, define them so we can narrow down what's oblique. Uh, then we will have like a, a image essay uh, through uh, uh, representations of architecture from art history, and then uh, we will look into the add-on. First, projection is basically the solving the problem of representing a 3D object on a 2D surface. Um, I know that in, in the field of computer graphics, it is a matrix transformation which manages this. Architects never reason that way. For us, it's a geometrical problem. It is we have a, a, a plane, which is our, let's say, sheet of paper. We draw lines, and uh, somehow we have to get the image of the, the 3D object we want. For the talk, uh, Projection is just divided in two categories, the central projection and the parallel projection. Central projection, very easy, it's the perspective. So there is an object, a picture plane, your painting, drawing, whatever, and a, a, a place where the lines uh, meet in one place. On the image, this point is the vanishing point. So when you see a perspective, parallel lines meet in one point on the horizon, that's central projection. The second one, which is, in our case, more interesting, is parallel projection. So it's basically the same, only that the lines don't meet in a point. They, are, they remain parallel throughout the projection. Um, I put a little uh, star behind orthographic because that's a clue. It is already implemented in Blender. So the orthographic camera is a parallel projection. What makes it orthographic is that the projection lines are always 90 degree orthographic to the plane. So wherever the plane is in the 3D space, the object is also always projected orthogonal on the plane. And you can guess what's the next. That's oblique projection. And the interesting thing is that oblique projection is basically the main case of, of parallel projection. Orthographic is just one specific situation where it's orthographic. All the other ways of projection will be oblique. Um, to understand it from this image, one can imagine that um, the projection plane lies on the floor next to the object, and the sun from infinity casts its shadow on the floor. Um, to be more precise, it's elevated because the, the plane is not close to the object, so it's like falling down. Uh, shadows is the most easy way to think oblique projection. Now we're going to look into history of representation. Very quickly, it's very rough. Uh, we skip periods. We start in 17th century, so don't happen op often, I think. Uh, so parallel projection has a very uh, uh, good advantage, which is as it doesn't join in a point, scale remains the same throughout the image very useful for fortification design, because one wants to draw the whole fortification and have the same amount of detail all around the city, let's say. So a big image of a city and the same amount of detail. Um, it's noticeable in the size of the trees in this image. It remains the same. The tree is not shrinking. The tree in front, the tree in the back is the same size, because all remains same scale. And as there is a, you see a plan above, it's very easy to draw. You have a plan and you lift up your, your drawing, let's say, from the image. Uh, then parallel projection got very much formalized, especially um, end of uh, 18th century by a French engineer revolutionary teacher at Polytechnic, Gaspard Monge. Uh, this is two planes of parallel projection. It's not very important to understand it, basically because we have two of them skipping by drawing from one to the other, one can manipulate objects in 3D. This is like an ancient cat, let's say. But it shows that actually parallel projection is a powerful tool in how to manage your image, what to show, what to manipulate. goes on with uh, the title image of the, the add-on, which is called Polke. That is from uh, Auguste Choisy, same school as the previous engineer, a bit later, who studied uh, the Palatine ruin, so it's the central ruin in Rome. And he starts to suggest many things in this image. It's very, like, for, we could, in our field, watch this image very long. Uh, what here is important is that it flattens the object. So actually, we see floor plan, elevation, section in the same image. 
So it can, it's a parallel projection is able it's somehow to, un, uh, to open up the object on the, f on the surface. And I mean, he, uh, he decided to add um, uh, the, the construction materials in it, and so adding information on it. There's also a point of view, we look from below up, which is a suggestion that architecture is a question about getting the forces down to earth. Very constructional thinking. This is another image of him. You know, here you see an example of how an image can be opened up. So this is a room where we can actually see all six surfaces of the room. It is opened up uh, in both directions. So it's somehow an impossible image, but it also becomes, and we notice this because it's an art installation, a tool to design. Like the composition of this uh, space is made on paper in this very strange projection. So one can, once one uh, handles projection, one can really compose with it, one can think with it. Here, another example where it's more about storytelling. So one can show different spaces we are, which are not connected uh, physically and what's going on. One sees the migration of birds, um, the water is probably towards um, east. So there's many suggestions and that's what projection is also for. More um, compositional, uh, John Haydock. Uh, again, oblique projection from top, but in order to see something when one sees that uh, from let's say above, the floor plan is all flipped 45 degrees, so can, one, one can draw with the surfaces of the walls and compose the space that way. That's what oblique projection is for. Parallel pro projection in general is a good way of making relationships between different objects because they exist in the same graphical space. There, uh, there is a notion of time which is present. Uh, one, can go, one can imagine that um, on this elements is applied an operation and one can go back and forth for, of this operation. So one has the same object at the moment t, different in time, but in the same space. And that's how we also use or make here yeah, students use projection. This is what, you, uh, what we saw uh, in the introduction, the exercise of writing code in order to make procedure, procedural models. Um, Parallel projection is the way to actually analyze something which is all top left, which is a music piece uh, in C by Terry Riley, that gets graphically, because in projection, easily, or let's say uh, straightforward, analyzed by decomposing it, putting things next to each other, and showing what, what is the rules in this music piece. On the right side, you see what came out from the code. So left is the analysis, the all beginning of the exercise, right is the outcome. And again, parallel projection puts these different outcomes next to each other, easy to compare. Same for built, the built heritage. Uh, there, the idea was to follow up Choisy's system, which suggests by a fragment the whole building. Again, we do that in parallel projection, step by step, very easy to reassemble. And uh, a slight little preview from Again, the talk on Friday morning. Uh, this is Palais d'Oclay. Here, oblique projection managed to show the floor plan without any distortion and see what's above. So it gives a hierarchy in, of the rooms, what the room is uh, bigger, smaller, very easy to understand. Uh, it gives a relationship of what's behind the building, what's in front of the building. One, sees, one can see both. One sees this relationship between the garden and the facade. And again, one can also compare how does the facade relate to the plan. So a lot of encapsulation of knowledge about this building. Uh, now, an uh, image from other colleague, Michel, who is also here, who is a practitioner, and he used the same add-on in his architectural practice. One can understand exactly the same idea, putting in relationship different spaces drawn with the same detail. Uh, it suggests the linearity of the building, the sequence of spaces, so it's not meant to be like an industry-ready uh, add-on and never will be, but people who are interested in architecture can make use of it in the context of also practice. To understand the add-on, uh, a little showing of what is achieved. So top right is a isometric camera, which is orthographic. Uh, bottom right is the oblique projection. That's the image we want to get. To illustrate it, it's just we, we, we put the image in space and show it in the, in, 
uh, in another 3D space to make it more clear. So the problem is, the camera is only orthographic. How do we get the image into oblique? Um, first tryouts never worked, which was um, to shift the camera. Things remain hidden where actually they should appear. One cannot shift the camera and see the side of something. Uh, so we will flip in top view, and it's the hint of how, it, how we achieved it. So that's, that's now the view, basically, of the missing camera. That's the one we want to get. We've, we turn the image, and we notice that the image actually stretches. And that's what we did. We changed the pixel ratio. The ratio of X pixels, so in height, one has an uh, oblique camera, should be changed at a certain parameter, depending on which kind, which kind of oblique projection you would like. That's, in a nutshell, what happens in the code. The rest is just managing this. Uh, can have a look. So the add-on is very useful for our students, too, because it um, is organized by conventions. So one could think uh, any kind of parallel projection or oblique projection is perfect, but actually in architecture we have very specific or through time, some, some, uh, some positions of planes came up more often and that became standards. And so we implemented uh, eight standards to be used with the add-on. The first is a very simple isometric. It means each axis is not deformed by the position of the plane. So ISO same, all three axes are one. So good to measure if one wants to draw a one-to-one -one relationship in scale. Uh, this is very useful. Then, as I said, over time conventions appear. It is also an ease of how the object appears. A cube in ISO isometric uh, projection is difficult once it's transparent. One doesn't know what's in front, what's in back. So slight shifts uh, appeared. Uh, D-metric means two axes are still one, to one uh, ratio. Logically, the three metric, uh, self-explaining, all three axes are deformed by the projection, but the object is very good looking, let's say. It's only a cube, but Certain spaces look better in three metric than D metric or isometric. The oblique one, uh, reference to the fortress or the, the, the walls of the city, it's called, this one is called uh, military. Uh, very easy, it is a, a plan turned uh, 45 degrees and then drawn upwards or downwards. Uh, wasn't looking so good, so it got shortened. So the, X, the, the Z axis gets a, a ratio, so one has to calculate uh, while drawing to reduce the height of the object. Um, often, it, this is better for bigger drawings. Um, it, all, it all depends. Cavalier, again, one to one, up, but the angles are a bit different and cabinet, again, the previous one, but shortened. Uh, we can see them in comparison. These are the three orthographic projections with the, an object we already know, and we can actually understand why orthographic wasn't used. Uh, the, the, the oblique was much better to understand the plan of this uh, fragment. And there we see the four oblique projections with the, the, oblique, uh, the, the Palantine object. What's next? Well, I would say to uh, implement an oblique camera. Uh, I won't be able to code it, but I, I will be able to help. Um, what's interesting is that, or we, we can see that uh, the add-on would maybe be uh, obsolete once the camera exists, but actually then it becomes an inventory of architectural history, ways of representing architecture. So it, it would transform into like a, uh, yeah, a catalog of projections, and easier to make this catalog once the oblique camera would exist. 
And what, comes, what is produced by that, it's actually a very intuitive way to show space. One wants to draw a cube in 3D. One what you do is you draw a square, you draw a second square, and you combine them. That's oblique projection. So it's more, actually, it's more general, more intuitive than orthographic. Uh, credits to all the people who made the nice images, to Fiona and Mark for assisting, and thank you. <laughs>